today we're going to be discussing some statistics. We're going to talk about how we describe distributions using a measure for shape, for center, and for spread. We're going to use numbers for some of these, and we're going to use just basic the physical shape of the object. Um, center is what we're used to seeing. Uh, it's kind of our, our mean, median, and mode. That's what most of you are familiar with. And then we're going to talk about how would you describe the spread. <clears throat> So in this case, you have a histogram. Uh, this was the question about how many hours a week do you watch television, or uh, average. And what we have here is we have a shape of a, essentially a histogram. And this shape would be, you have a huge group of numbers, kind of over around the area from, from 1 to 4, and then it kind of trails off there upwards up towards 13. The question is, how do we describe this? Do, we're, do we say the middle is at 2, or do we say the middle is more along the lines of around 6? Uh, what's the shape? Is it spread? How, how would we describe how much it's spread out? Do we say, well, it goes from 0 to 13? Um, and all of these are valid ways, but there's a lot more than just those simple elements. So let's talk about shape first. Shape is the easiest. Uh, shape is exactly what it sounds like. What does the shape look like? Now, there's only a few specific shapes that we're really going to be uh, looking at. And the first one we call is skewed. Now skewed has two directions. It can be skewed to the right, it can be skewed to the left. Uh, this one people get backwards a lot of the time because they think, where's the big chunk of data? Oh, it's all on the left side, so this must be skewed that way. Skewedness was referring to where does the tail kind of point out. This kind of trails off to which side? It trails off to the right side. So we call this graph skewed right. And you can see that off on our picture here. Next, we have one called symmetric. And this is uh, obvious. Symmetric means it's about the same on the left and the right if I were to cut it in half. Now notice in my picture that it's not perfectly symmetric. It is symmetric in, in, in a way. This is statistics, and we don't really deal with perfection here. This is not idealistic situations. This is realistic. Uh, we talk about reality, and we always use some type of example when we talk about statistics. In this case, you have approximately uh, the same graph on the right and left sides of your picture. So if I were to cut this in half and fold it over, then you would see it, it would be about the same on both sides. Okay, that's symmetric. Skewed left. Here again, this is the kind of the opposite of skewed right. Now this is tail, the, the tail kind of trails off to the left side. And so you have a skewed left graph. And the last one we're going to discuss is uniform. The uniform is where all of the bars are about the same height. So all of, if you were asking a question, if this was still the same exact response to the question about how many hours a week, then they all would have this about the same response. Some a little more, some a little less, but essentially you, you kind of have the bars going across at the same height, and that was what we'd be, we would call uniform. Notice that I could also discuss that uniform is really a, almost a symmetric type of graph also, but uniform is a better description. So be careful. Sometimes you can have things that are slightly skewed to the right, but they're more symmetric than they are skewed. So you can describe those things in that way, where you can say, oh, well, it's slightly skewed to the right or approximately symmetric. You can qualify those things in that way. But you really want to use the, the description that describes it the best. The last thing we're going to look at <clears throat> is center. Uh, center has three descriptions. Center is the mode, the median, and the mean. And the question is, when do we use these things? Um, most of you are most familiar with the mean because that's the way that your grade is calculated in all of your classes. <clears throat> what we want to be able to distinguish between is what's the purpose of each one. Uh, the quickest and easiest description is when do I use the, the mode? The mode, when you have multiple modes in a situation, in other words, you can see several peaks throughout your graph, not just one peak. It may be a better idea in that case to use the mode. And it, that's a very uncommon situation, but it's it practice. So if you have multiple kind of peaks and valleys in your graph, very distinct peaks, not little tiny peaks and stuff like that, but you have a huge chunk of data and then you have a big gap between data and a huge chunk of data, 
down the road, you can see that is when you'd use the median. In this picture on the screen, we have a skewed right graph. So we're down to the real question, which this is the one that you really have to kind of battle between. When do I use the mean versus the median? And the example that we're going to look at here, on this screen you can see that you have a skewed right graph. And the real quick and easy answer is that if I have a skewed distribution, I'm going to choose the median. The median is less affected by the outliers that are the potential outliers in that skewedness, but the mean is very much affected by those. Uh, the example would be uh, professional athletes. If you were to take a, let's say, a, a basketball team, a pro basketball team, and and look at those salaries on that team, you're going to have those one or two superstars on the team that are going to get paid uh, ridiculous amounts of money, you know, ten, fifteen million dollars. Okay. But the average player probably makes less than $1 million. And so if I were to average all that together, then it would show up as, oh, well, the average player makes you know, a couple million dollars a year, and that's not true. Most of them make less than that. It's because the, the outlier is causing the mean to go higher. You can relate this to your grades. If you have an average, you know, a test average somewhere around the 80s, because you're making 80 and 85 and maybe a 90 and a 72 and a, you know, maybe even a 68 thrown in there, but your average falls around 80. But then that day comes where you didn't study and you had a bad day and you make a 20 on the test and your grade drops way down. Okay, That's what happens to the mean when outliers are present. Okay, so when it's skewed, you're going to choose the median to describe center. Now, if it's symmetric or uniform, we're going to choose the mean. If I want if I can choose the mean, I want to choose the mean. That's that's probably the most useful description of center. Okay? Real quick, one more time. The mode is chosen when you have multiple modes. The mean is chosen when you have symmetric or uniform distributions. The median is chosen when you have skewed left or skewed right graphs. Okay, last description is called spread. And spread is really what it sounds like. How spread out are the data? And, uh, and there's three ways that we, we typically use to describe this. Okay, range, which is the maximum minus the minimum. That's your basic description uh, of, of range. That's really not useful because if you have an outlier present, then you have this huge range, which really doesn't give a good description uh, of, of what you're looking at. All right, then we have something a little, it's related to that. It's the interquartile range or the IQR. This is where you find the median and then you find the median uh, of, of the first half and the median of the second half. And those are Q3 and Q1. So it's like the 75th percentile and the 25th percentile. Q2, by the way, which is the 50th percentile, is your median. It's halfway in the middle. So the interquartile range would be the difference. It's like, it's like range where you're subtracting two numbers. But in this case, rather than taking the max and the min, I'm going to be taking... <clears throat> the 25th percentile and 75th percentile. So I'd say Q3 minus Q1. Um, the last, probably the most useful, is standard deviation. Uh, standard deviation is, uh, you've, you've learned about this, standard deviation is probably the more difficult part to calculate if you're having to calculate things by hand. Uh, standard deviation is, essentially is the average distance away any given point is from your mean. So here that brings us back into, well, which one do I use? Well, if, if I don't have a lot of data, if I don't have a lot of information about what I'm looking at, I may be forced into using the range simply because I, I don't have enough information to calculate the rest of it. The interquartile range, which is the middle 50%, uh, is nice. When I have outliers or if it's skewed, I'm going to choose the interquartile range. This goes along with choosing the medians because the interquartile range is based on median values. So it will not be affected by the outlier presence or the skewedness. If it's symmetric or uniform, standard deviation is going to be my choice. Here, standard deviation uses the mean to be calculated, and so you're still related to those types of the situations. Okay, so standard deviation, when it's symmetric or if it's uniform, interquartile range, if it's skewed left or skewed right, or if I have major outliers and it maybe even is symmetric, I could use the interquartile range to get a better description of kind of where the majority of my data is ranging in between. All right. 
Bat one more time, it's shape, center, and spread. And we use these things to describe distributions. Anytime that you're given a distribution, say for example, if we're looking at a distribution like this, and so we have 10 different prices for laptops in 2010. And these are the top, Mac, uh, top laptops for that year. And I wanted to, to describe this distribution, if that was the, 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 the question, then I would need to give some measure of shape, some measure of center, and some measure of spread. And I would do that, and I would look at these numbers, and I may have to graph them. I may have to, to calculate a few things to say, well, is it symmetrical? Is it skewed? You know, I'm not sure. I need to look at the data, and that's what we're going to look at next.